true, but I think it was a, bit, a little bit too much of an hour. Before I set off, if you have any questions during the presentation, just raise your hand, I'll give you a signal and uh, shoot your question. I'm uh, Tom de Moor, I live and work in Belgium, that's a small country in the center of Europe, uh, between France, Netherlands and Germany. I'm working for uh, VCLB Ghent, you see my contacts, if you have any questions uh, afterwards, uh, feel free to contact me, uh, no problem at all. Uh, I put them also there because I'm going to ask you one little question. Please take a picture of me during my presentation. My eldest daughter would love to see me speaking. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you a little, about, a little bit more about uh, VCLB Ghent, what we are doing, because it's quite important for the rest of the story, why we, did, we came to the solution we, uh, we are having. VCLB Ghent is a non-profit organization that is supporting uh, 130 schools in dealing with children that are causing troubles or having troubles. Uh, it's not always clear uh, what the difference is. Um, we are supporting schools so that um, children uh, can have the best education as possible. Uh, that can be going from uh, pupils that don't know uh, what to study, will I do science or will I do arts? But it also goes uh, for children, a 10 year old kid that put a toilet uh, on fire uh, at school at the age of 10, okay. Um, our services are free, as in free beer. Uh, so people don't have to pay for us. We are funded by the Flemish government. Uh, yeah, we have quite a lot of governments in our small country, but that's the Flemish government. But you know how it goes. When you uh, are funded by the government, you get uh, money to do your job. And okay, it is money, but it is not enough money to do it well. This is one of our beautiful buildings we are uh, housed in. As you can see, it's really state of the art. Um, we are about to follow uh, 40,000 people, uh, pupils. Uh, these, we have 150 colleagues. These are 50 of them. They are uh, sitting uh, at my building where I'm uh, housed in. As you can see, most of them are female. That is really nice. I could make some slash dot jokes about that over a real woman and not inflatable, but we're not going to do that. Um, but as you see, they don't really look like the IT crowd. They are just normally, normal, regular people. We have 150 of them. 70% um, uh, of my colleagues is working part-time. Uh, we have a very good uh, organization that makes us, that we can uh, work uh, yeah, uh, not a full time, so we have a, quite a, an organization. Um, we spend 85% uh, of the time uh, out of the office. We are working at schools, we are working also um, at the parent, with, with the pupils at home. So most of my colleagues are quite uh, difficult uh, to reach. Uh, so that is also what uh, our needs were. Uh, we want uh, our, my colleagues to be more reachable uh, when, when you combine uh, the part-time working and with the working out of the office, you know that a simple plain fixed landline doesn't make them really reachable. They are almost never in the house and when they are in the house they are having meetings. Giving them a simple plain mobile wasn't a good solution for us neither. Uh, as in most countries, uh, mobiles have their own prefix. In uh, Belgium it's 04, uh, fixed numbers are 0 to uh, 9. Uh, calling a mobile phone also brings others, other, expe other expectations from the other side. I know myself, when I call someone and it's mo on, an, on its mobile phone and he doesn't pick up, I have to, the first thing is, oh, damn, he doesn't pick up. Ah, am I not important enough? Or Perhaps he is really busy. Um, I leave a message, a voicemail message, and then I have something from, hmm, it's about three, four hours uh, ago I left a message, I haven't uh, heard him back. Uh, I get a little upset about it. Maybe I should take medication for that, can be, but when I call a fixed landline, I know, okay, the person cannot be at the office. When I leave a message, 
people still think that the messages are stored on the phone and not coming to your emails. They are not used to having an asterisk and uh, stuff like that. I know that uh, people can only listen to the voicemail when they actually are coming back in the office and that can take some time. So that was one of the things we had uh, also uh, in our mind from when we did our project. So uh, what did I come, uh, come up with? Uh, we wanted uh, fixed landlines that were uh, forwarded to the mobile devices. Uh, so mobile devices so that people could have uh, take a call when they were working at school or at parents' uh, home, uh, but it had to be very low budget. We ha don't have many budgets. It, we wanted some added functionality. We wanted an uh, auto-attended, uh, stuff like that. We wanted to have a real voicemail and with messages delivered to the uh, email. So uh, that was also uh, one of our needs. And we also did uh, want to get rid of our uh, Fed old telco, as, as many people, they really had an attitude from, you may be glad that you are a client with us. If you weren't a client with us, you really would feel lost. No, we didn't. Uh, yeah, probably be, you will recognize that. So what was our uh, solution? Um, we took 135 Android phones. We put a SIP client on it, and we connected them to, uh, asterisk, uh, uh, to, our, to our asterisk through Wi-Fi. Uh, we didn't use 3G or 4G. Uh, someone asked me already why you didn't do that. Uh, because in Belgium, uh, 4G isn't yet available, and 3G, the quality is not good enough uh, for uh, calling, uh, making uh, SIP calls. So that was not an option. When Wi-Fi wasn't available, yes, there are places where Wi-Fi isn't available. Some, even here in the, near, <laughs> in the neighborhood, we have places where Wi-Fi isn't stable enough uh, and it isn't always available. When Wi-Fi isn't available, we just do plain call forwarding to the mobile number uh, located in the uh, cell phone. I needed an integrator because when things uh, would go wrong, uh, I wanted to blame someone and I wanted to point the finger to someone also because when I had an integrator I got more money uh, from the government than when I did it myself. Uh, IP was our integrator. Um, it's a really nice company. It's a little of the side but uh, when I heard uh, Clint Oram this morning from Sugar uh, CRM saying uh, that uh, companies should be open and uh, would, would ha should that companies we should be, have more openness and transparency. I really thought about uh, those guys from IP. They really have that attitude. They make you go home, uh, they sell you a solution, but they gave you all the knowledge and all um, the power to go afterwards, uh, go further with it on yourself. That's something that I really want to say. If you are uh, an integrator too, make that your uh, Customers at the end of the uh, cycle can go uh, on, on, move on on their own. That's I really uh, appreciate that. Jack, if you are here, uh, you can buy me a drink for saying this afterwards. Um, okay, what we were planning to do wasn't such a big deal. It's just plain. Um, yeah, call forwarding, it, it's not uh, such a big deal. But we did have some troubles uh, we came in. That's probably so. also the reason. Not many people have done this uh, on such a scale, and that's probably the reason why I'm standing here today in front of you, in the finest selection of the asterisk community. Who am I to say uh, what you have to do? What troubles did we have? We had to choose the right phone for our project. We also had to choose the right SIP client, we had to keep our Wi-Fi active. And normally, uh, uh, Androids have the, it's in the Android's nature to put the Wi-Fi uh, off when it goes in standby because it wants to save, uh, save energy on the battery. That's logical, but when you want to have receive calls through SIP, it's very important that your Wi-Fi keeps its connection on. We had a nice trouble with our DSAPD. I will give a very small 30 seconds on Codex, and people wanted the full address, address book on their phone. I'll give you a solution for that too. Choosing the right phone. 
we asked our users, what is the ideal telephone mobile for you? And they come, came up with this one. You probably all know that phone. Your mom or your grandmother still has one like that. We translated it in, it has a long battery life. It goes up to seven days or even more. Yeah, of course you can't do anything with it. It fits in any handbag or pocket. Remember, I work with a lot of female colleagues, so they don't wear belts where they put all their phones in. No, they want it, a, a nice solution. Hmm? The interface is as simple as possible. They are not the IT crowd, so keep it simple. And also, they are almost unbreakable. They now, those phones, they never uh, go broke. OK, when I had uh, that knowledge, I said, OK, let's find a, uh, a Nokia phone that is uh, SIP enabled, and we can uh, use that phone. People are used with the interface. Uh, OK, great. I tried the Nokia C301. You see it's a small phone, fits in any, in any bag. Uh, great, the in, uh, interface is familiar. Uh, people are familiar with it, so great. But they are a bitch to configure. Uh, sorry, pardon my French. They are uh, a hell to configure. First, we have to create an XML file with all the settings in it for uh, your own uh, PBX. Then you have to make a provisioning file from it uh, through another program, and then you have to uh, do an OBEX push through Bluetooth to the phone. And if you have to make a change, you have to do redo all the cycle. Uh, okay, uh, I would have done it. If it really was a great phone, I would have done it for my users. Uh, you can do some scripting uh, that, that creates the XML file, so maybe I should have done it. But my biggest problem with that phone is, and I will uh, come back on that later uh, uh, several times, is when you, have, when you are going to make a call, you dial the number, you press the, uh, the green phone on it, and it asks, how do you want to call? Do you want to make a VoIP call, or do you just want to uh, make a call uh, on your mobile? But users who don't, do not know, how, do I have an internet connection? Is it stable enough? They don't, no, no, help. They just want to dial, uh, push the, the, the green button, and they want to dial out. And that was a pity that the Nokia couldn't uh, do that. So I thought, I need another phone. Um, and you know, Asterisk is not the only company in the world that is having a, this idea of, we have to change the world of telephony. As mentioned this morning, there is another company too. Yes, Google with its Android. Some history, indeed it was uh, announced, uh, Android as uh, the product that brings more openness uh, to our phones and to our tablets. And indeed I thought I, maybe I should go uh, this way. Uh, good news is there is a very wide range of phones available, uh, even within my budget. Uh, and it gave me much more uh, flexibility. A negative point is, it isn't really su uh, suitable for large enterprises, because I'm gonna uh, uh, tell you more about it. Um, you have to configure it with a, a Google account, but I wasn't, um, okay, I'm lazy, thus I don't make 135 separate uh, Google accounts for each phone. Uh, I just take one uh, Google account and put all the extra software on it with that um, account. Uh, but then people start taking pictures and they got shared with Picasa uh, sharing. I, it was disabled with, with the automatic updates. It got enabled back. I've never seen so many boring family pictures in my life. Um, so that's one of the um, advantages of larger uh, things like uh, BlackBerry, you have much more control as an administrator of their phones. You can, uh, that's, but okay, yeah, it's against the nature uh, of Android uh, for giving so much uh, control. We actually uh, got, uh, yeah, the Samsung Geo that was within my budget. I thought it would be easy to get uh, 135 uh, mobile phones. Uh, it wasn't that easy. Within my uh, budget range, they, it, they were all, end of life and I couldn't get 135 
or they were so popular because they were cheap that they couldn't deliver me 135 phones. But actually, we finally got our hand on uh, these ones. For the people in the back, it's there also. Uh, they are not expensive. They have an eight, uh, 800 megahertz processor, so quite good, good battery performance uh, with Wi-Fi on. Uh, 24 hours on, uh, but you do no calls, it goes three days. With my Nokia N900, I can do that, but that has really a bad battery. Uh, what do our users say about uh, our phones? They are having a, some trouble with uh, the place of the buttons uh, on the phone. Uh, the buttons are right here, and when they are calling, the volume they are pushing it and then it goes down or it goes up. And that's one of the problems they have. Um, another problem they have is the touch screen. You don't believe it, but I see people calling, pushing the phone that to their face that it actually goes on speaker or in hold. Uh, oh, it goes on speaker, what have I done? Okay, you're pushing too hard. So that was, the Nokia was much better there. You have a keypad there, so they can't, when they push, okay, they just, push a button, but uh, they don't go uh, uh, setting things uh, on. And they are also complaining about the battery, but I think everybody is complaining about this battery of his uh, mobile phone. So that is really not uh, such a big issue. Okay, uh, I've talked about uh, the phones now. Now I will handle the SIP clients, then I'll um, come back. Uh, on keeping the Wi-Fi uh, active, and I will talking about the DHAPD troubles. I will be comparing three SIP clients for you: uh, CSIP Simple, Xivo Client, uh, and SIP Droid. I start with uh, CSIP Simple. It's really a great product. It's free. Uh, it's totally, but really totally configurable. It has a very nice interface. And it is integrated with the native dialer. It means you just uh, click on the Android on the green telephone, you dial the number, and it goes out uh, through CSIP Simple. But it also, just like the Nokia, asks how do you want to dial out. It's such a pity that uh, that is the one thing that you can't configure in CSIP Simple. I can even configure uh, how people have to answer their, their phones. Do, you, do they want a slider or do they want a button to push to answer the phone? My people actually prefer buttons. They hate the sliders. Uh, and it's really nice that you can set uh, in uh, CSIP simple, you have a setting for, okay, how does, it, how does it have to go? But it's pity that you can't say, if VoIP is available, call out a true VoIP. That is the only thing that's missing. And also on the Samsungs, the speaker doesn't work. That's an issue that still uh, has to be resolved. Xivo client. I know that the people from uh, Xivo are uh, also speaking here. Uh, good things are, it is a really, really great uh, application with uh, fully integrated. It only works for Xivo PBXs. Xivo is uh, asterisk based. Uh, but they put a nice GUI, GUI on it and a lot of uh, nice uh, extra features. And that's a great thing. But it only works with uh, that kind uh, of uh, PBX. But the most negative point was for the outgoing di dialing, you, ha you actually have to open the application. So you must know that for dialing, you have to open uh, the application, then uh, dial your number, press the, press the green button. That is too many steps because when you're not connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network, okay, it doesn't work. So people had to uh, look, oh, am I connected, yes or no? So that was not an option. It's pity that it's not integrated with the native dialer, uh, else I would definitely have used it. Subdroid, my favorite Subdroid. That's the one we are actually using now uh, at the moment. It's also quite uh, completely configurable. And uh, the best feature of, uh, of all is it's fully integrated with the native dialer. You can set uh, when there is a Wi-Fi connection and you are connected uh, to the PBX. When you make an outgoing call, just uh, use uh, your uh, VoIP account. If there is no VoIP, uh, uh, 
if you don't, don't have a connection with your PBX because there is no Wi-Fi, it just dials out uh, over the cell phone. So that's really great. That's for people, they find it really uh, handy that they don't have to think, how do I have to make my call? And it has a quite simple uh, layout, so people can't mess around with it. So that's really uh, nice about it. Uh, what are, do our users saying about it? They find it difficult uh, that they have two different screens for answering a phone. These are, you can't take screenshots when you an have an incoming uh, call on an Android. When you do that, uh, it goes, uh, you're rejecting the call. So these are pictures taken with another cell phone uh, from, the, thing, from uh, the phone. When you have a VoIP connection, uh, yes, yeah, if you're connected to the PBX, you get a screen from um, SIPDROID that you have to slide up uh, to answer the phone. And when you are not connected, the plain um, Android screen is you have to slide uh, to the right. And people find that confusing. My people find that confusing. Oh, I have a phone. Is it right or up? And you actually can't see it, but okay, they are not the IT crowd. Um, what we also, uh, what also is an issue uh, for us is when they are not connected to the Wi-Fi uh, network and they, uh, the, the call gets forwarded, but we are losing uh, the caller ID from the person that is calling us. We can't uh, send it with us, uh, send it to the phone. Uh, they actually see the number of the, uh, that is doing the call forwarding. Uh, so many people have put that already in their address book uh, as, oh, that's that person. No, no, it's when they dial that number, it's an internal number from us. They get to hear, sorry, Dave, I can't do that. Um, they really like the, automat the automatic selection for, uh, from the network that they don't have to think from how, how do I gonna make a call? They just have, uh, dial the number, press the green button, and SIPDROIDS handles uh, all the rest. And they are missing texting. We, have, we made a manual for them, and there is uh, that painting from uh, Magritan with the pipe, Cecine Pazum Pip, and uh, this is not a mobile phone we put under it. But they are really missing texting, okay? That's an issue we haven't resolved yet. We could uh, enable it, but when they send the text message, uh, the number of the cell phone is sent with it, and that's what we really uh, want uh, to hide. Uh, when they are dialing out uh, with our mobile, the settings are on the phone that uh, uh, the number is hidden. So uh, when they are dialing with uh, VoIP, then actually the number of their uh, fixed landline is shown. Okay, the next problem was keeping Wi-Fi uh, active. The, as I said, it's against the nature of Android to keep uh, the Wi-Fi active because it wants to save as much as possible on its battery. Um, first of all, you have to have a professional Wi-Fi network if you are deploying it about so many phones. Uh, as you know, uh, VoIP really doesn't like uh, latency on your network or jitter. It has to go straight through. And uh, Wi-Fi brings us back to hub technology. We are so used to switches, but Wi-Fi, its, it, its nature is back uh, hub technology, technology. So you have to have a decent network when you are connecting uh, 70 phones in one place uh, to some access point. Your small uh, access points won't do it. You have to have a really good one. As I said, SIP needs the Wi-Fi continuously. Android disables it. We have to combine three apps uh, to solve this issue. Keep Wi-Fi, just does what it says. It keeps the Wi-Fi on even when the phone goes in standby. You have a setting um, in the Android that uh, your Wi-Fi have to uh, keep some even when it goes in standby. But when you combine uh, data on your SIM card uh, and there is a data connection, uh, then the Wi-Fi still gets disabled and keep Wi-Fi keeps that on. 
Uh, Wi-Fi Connect makes that uh, it actually scans uh, all the networks that are in the neighborhood and it connects with uh, the network you already has connected been to uh, so that people don't have to come in uh, of the building and have to say, oh no, I know I want to connect. No, I keep uh, Wi-Fi Wi -Fi Connect and that's not a typo, it's really Wi-Fi Connect makes it um, automatically uh, connects to a network that it has already been connected to. Uh, and best Wi-Fi, we're using that uh, to uh, connect to the access point with the best um, uh, signal. Because Android is also a strange nature uh, that when you come in, it makes connection to uh, the access point that is located at the entrance. Uh, you go to the second floor and it still has a weak connection, but it won't drop the connection and make another connection to uh, the, uh, the access point on the second floor. No, it keeps connected to the one with the entrance. And if you have a bad connection, okay, your uh, calls will uh, sound like that too. And best Wi-Fi uh, automatically, automatically connects to uh, the access point with the best um, signal. Okay. Ah, next, the DHAP D troubles. I always think about this when someone brings up the buzzword, bring your own device. I'd really think, oh no, there we go again. It's a great idea, but I don't want to be a network administrator uh, responsible for such a network. You all know that DHAP D gives IP addresses to devices. That's what it does, that's what it's made for. But do you know how DHAPD recognize a single device. I'm gonna have some interaction. Who thinks it's the MAC address? If you don't point your hand, I'll ask you what it actually is. So if you don't? No, I thought that also. It, but what happened? We were testing it with three phones. Oh, I am fine, great, it's working. We testing it with 10 phones. Hmm, we have some issues, but we don't really recognize what the issue is. We start configuring 135 phones and it totally went down. What was the problem? DHAPD recognized the device on the unique client identifier that uh, the device is sending to the DHAPD server. Uh, and then it attaches an, um, an IP address to that. If there is no uh, client identifier sent, then it will use the MAC address. And our 135 phones had 10 unique identifiers. So uh, we, had to, we had 10 uh, IP addresses for 135 uh, phones. This uh, one single uh, access point was, uh, one single uh, IP address was given away to multiple uh, phones. If you had ever had a net, a net address translating problem, that was really a net address translating problem. When I left the office that day, I, I thought, how do I gonna solve this? Luckily, the DHAPD has a great mailing list and uh, half an hour after I posted uh, the question, uh, they said, just give it static leases. As you see, um, the unique identifiers are here. And it's just, and yeah, the, the Androids have a little, the, so that's really, uh, this is a leases uh, file. And yeah, they use the MAC addresses too, but uh, the, the primary source of identifying uh, a device is uh, the unique identifier. So 135 static leases uh, configured uh, over the three buildings and our problems were solved. But it also makes that when people uh, go with their mobile phones uh, to another Wi-Fi network that is not um, configured uh, by us, that you can have those kind of problems. And I'm actually thinking maybe that is the problems we are experiencing here with the Wi-Fi too. Uh, you know, sometimes your Wi-Fi goes up and down here uh, in, at this uh, conference, and I, maybe, I'm not sure, but it could be that. Very small little thing on Codex. Uh, ALO and ULO gave latency because they are uh, using some more bandwidth, and uh, GSM, as logical, gives on a cell phone the best uh, result. 
Uh, that was something we, we discovered also from that the GSM codec gave us the best result. But okay, uh, not everybody has uh, that issue uh, with mobile phones, but uh, actually on ours uh, it did. The last thing uh, before uh, I will answering your questions is people wanted a full address book on their phone. Uh, it's, it's indeed, it's quite handy if you can say, uh, oh, I want to call uh, Hilde. As you see, Hilde is a very popular uh, first name uh, at my office. We are all, all uh, Hilde and Nancy are the most common names uh, with us. Uh, so uh, I got an app, uh, contacts in line from uh, Philip Prados. It's a well, Philip Prados, uh, it's a French guy. Um, and he made an address book with uh, all kind of uh, plugins uh, for it. So we used it with an LDAP plugin and people can actually search uh, on our LDAP D server uh, the, uh, email uh, the email addresses and the phone numbers uh, from uh, my colleagues. Uh, they can do that through Wi-Fi or uh, through their uh, 3G uh, data connection, so that's no problem. But there is a little issue, it's quite unstable. It is not mature enough uh, to be really uh, good. Do you have any questions? Oh, look, no, uh, the question is, have I ever been using uh, Zo Zoiper? Uh, no, I haven't, but it's a good idea. I will try it. Is it free or do you have to pay for it? You have to pay a little small amount, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was thinking, doesn't it have a, it has a Windows version also. I've used that one and that was totally crap, so I didn't go to the Android. Uh, sorry for the people that are creating uh, Zoiper, but I, that was an issue at that moment. I have a question. Uh, if you, uh, someone use Wi-Fi uh, connect to uh, asterisk, uh, but uh, uh, when the user roll on to another place, uh, the Wi-Fi signal is, uh, is too weak to connect to the PBX, uh, then you, you, sign, you I, I understand your uh, and your mobile phone will connect to the PST network. Yes, it will. Uh, but uh, right now the uh, the calling is is uh, is broke or or keep keep the uh, the hang up or is keeping on. Sorry. Um. Um, when you're making a call and you're connected to the Wi-Fi and you go out of the office and your Wi-Fi connection drops, then the calls get dropped too. There is a solution for that, that it uh, automatically goes uh, over to your cell phone, but it was so expensive that we couldn't use it. It, it is technology that does exist, but was not affordable for us. So you have a technology that does make, uh, that actually uh, Goes, uh, follows you uh, and your call, and when your connection breaks, then it goes over to the, the other network. That, uh, your side, uh, I, I understand is, is two, two sides. Uh, you uh, use one as the uh, register, uh, one as the risk box, use uh, two, two zip drive, uh, silent uh, connection to one as the risk uh, yeah. uh, box, and uh, if uh, the Wi Fi signal is too weak, then the asterisk will use uh, the GS asterisk network. will uh, see that uh, the that there is no longer uh, re registration, and actually the dial plan uh, solves that issue. We try first calling um, the extension, uh, the SIP extension, and if uh, that doesn't work, if that uh, gives. Uh, uh, not, uh, not the uh, dial status of answer. It goes through. Uh, it goes to the mobile phone number. I see. Okay. Of course, it's not a little more complicated like that one because when you uh, reject the phone, it also doesn't go ringing again to the mobile. No, then you go directly to the voicemail or to the uh, automatic attendant. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say that. Uh, battery life uh, with all the apps on, I do uh, 
two days with it. Uh, and one day, if I really call a lot, if I'm calling more than two hours uh, with my phone on a day, I will uh, have 24 hours uh, that I will be uh, having with my battery. So that's, uh, that's acceptable for me. My users are complaining it's still uh, flat too early, but that's like we are always complaining about our users. Uh, we are complaining about them, they are complaining about their batteries. That's no problem. A GSM codec are we using? Yes, it's, uh, it sounds most natural for a mobile device. A little broken, uh, a little flat. <laughs> yeah, but it works <laughs> for us. <laughs> okay. Sibroid. And that's because it has a fully, it's fully integrated with the native dialer. When you uh, just you, uh, type your, uh, you type the, you, you dial the number, you, pu you push the, the green button, the green phone, and if uh, you have a VoIP enabled uh, with, through Wi-Fi, it automatically, automatically goes out through there and else it goes over the mobile. Is it open source? Yes, it is. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tom, you're to be congratulated. You've done an amazing amount all on your own. But you know what? I think you gave up a little bit too early with the, uh, with the Nokia handsets because you, you couldn't uh, remotely provision the SIP settings. Uh, and I can show you how to do that. It's really easy. Yeah, I, I've been looking on the internet uh, quite, oh, well, they, well, quite well, some time. I didn't find it, but I'm... Uh, well, I'll show you where to look. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's different from each model to model. So uh, on the higher end models, it is definitely more easier, but that's also a model that costs 100 euro or so. And uh, yeah, uh, they actually limit uh, some things, but uh, I am uh, actually pleased to, to learn. Uh, yeah, show I, me. I think we can show you how to do the SMS as well. Okay. <laughs> oh, my users will be so happy when I go home. <laughs> I can return to home. Okay, uh, final conclusions. Uh, VoIP on mobiles on a larger scale? Yes, you can. Uh, but there is still quite uh, some room for improvements. Uh, you need a good phone, you need a good Wi Fi network, you need a good SIP client, and smart users. We all want those. Okay, that was it.